Welcome. My name is Herbert von Bose and I'm Director of Industrial Technologies of the European Commission in the Director General for Research and Innovation. I want to invite you to the Manufuture Conference. For the second half of 2013, Lithuania has taken over the presidency of the Council of the European Union. The upcoming Manufuture Conference is a key presidency event. The conference is supported by the Lithuanian government and the European Commission. A strong manufacturing base is the key for our future. Discussions will focus on Horizon 2020. This is the EU framework program for research and innovation, which will start in 2014 and go up to 2020. With this program, Europe will become even more innovation friendly and the program will support innovative ideas which can be turned into products and services that create growth and jobs. I cordially invite you to attend this important event for research and innovation in manufacturing in Europe. I hope to see you there in order to share our vision and to have stimulating and fruitful discussions. We will promote effective cooperation for a more sustainable and more competitive European manufacturing industry. Thank you very much and I look forward to seeing you in Vilnius. On the 6th of October, Vilnius International Airport was teeming with information on the Manufuture Conference in anticipation of the participants due to arrive from various European cities. As guests flew in from cities such as Brussels, Frankfurt and Prague, they were met by members of the Manufuture Conference Organizing Committee and their assistants, who continued to look after them over the course of their stay in Lithuania. It is really a pleasure to be here. It's for the first me for me. It was the first time coming here, and I am totally impressed by this fantastic city. I think it is very important to come to your country um, with the manufacturing conference. We have. 40 uh, countries represented, more than 500 people, and they're all coming to your country, which is not happening every day, yeah, of course. And so for me, it is very important that we uh, benefit or we build on the 20% um, manufacturing base you have in your country. You have to keep it, of course. And for this, the recipe will be new knowledge, new, uh, uh, re more research, more innovation in order to keep your country up at the 20% or even be be beyond and to get it to high-tech applications. And I think we need both the industry and the academic side because the academic side gives us the longer-term vision, gives us the uh, background thinking uh, in it. And I think from that point of view, it's excellent if we get to a good cooperation between the industry on the one side, who has to implement, has to do it, and the knowledge creators in academics and in research establishments. So Horizon 2020, a big, uh, the European research program, starts by the end of this year. Big budget, 70 billion, so a huge amount of money. And in this huge amount of money, of course, not everything, but a part will be given to manufacturing. And manufacturing is part of what we call key enabling technologies. We believe that Europe has to be fit in a number of technologies which are the, the basis for the future. And we have, for example, nanotechnologies. We have materials research. You have biotechnologies. You have uh, micro nanoelectronics. Uh, you have uh, uh, robotics. And all of this has to be produced, has to be manufactured. The most beautiful material doesn't help if you cannot produce it. And the most beautiful produced material cannot help if you cannot integrate it into the car or into the final product. So that is a big challenge. It sounds easy, but it's not so easy. So if you have, for example, a metallic structure, 
and to bring this together with a with a with a carbon fiber structure this needs research this needs work and this is something which is done by many future by manufacturing and this we will do in a way in a holistic approach looking into the materials looking into nanotechnologies looking into the other key enabling technologies and to make sure that it all can be manufactured in Europe <music> Upon arrival, the majority of the conference guests took advantage of the opportunity to tour the old town of Vilnius. Now a country of 3 million people, Lithuania has a history that goes back some 750 years. The Vilnius old town, which has been included in the UNESCO World Heritage List, is clearly one of the country's most unique sites. Covering an area of 3.59 square kilometers and encompassing nearly 1,500 buildings, it is one of the largest and most beautiful old towns in Central and Eastern Europe. This part of the Lithuanian capital is something that shouldn't be missed. As the guests assembled, action moved to the Vilnius University Library, where the International Advisory Committee went over preparation for the conference and approved the report. Founded by the Jesuits in 1579, Vilnius University is one of the oldest and most prominent schools of higher education in Central and Eastern Europe. The Vilnius University Library is the oldest academic library in Lithuania. This is a very, very old country. It's a very important piece of Europe because Europe needs a lot of cooperation, especially with the young, youngest countries that are joining Europe. Now we, we came to, to Lithuania with this conference and we will see during the two days we have a lot of face-to-face -face meetings with the entrepreneur from Lithuania that hopefully will uh, be interested in uh, the development uh, that we are talking about. Uh, the conference is mostly about innovation, it's mostly about research, uh, research using also not only private funding but also public funding that Europe is dedicating to this uh, kind of uh, uh, area of interest. So I hope that uh, Lithuania with research centers, universities and enterprises, they they will participate more and more. After becoming acquainted with Vilnius University, the participants moved to the palace of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania, where a welcome reception was held in the evening. The palace of the Grand Dukes was once part of the lower castle complex. The palace site was inhabited as far back as the 4th century. The fortified wooden settlement was eventually replaced by a stone castle in the 13th-14th centuries. The Gothic royal palace was built in the 15th century. In 1661, the palace of the Grand Dukes was severely damaged and plundered during the battles between the Lithuanian and Russian armies, and later demolished in 1801. The palace was rebuilt in 2002-2009 in the Renaissance style that prevailed in 1520-1530. 
At the Palace of the Grand Dukes, the guests had the opportunity to admire the palace exhibits and were also treated to a concert by Aruna Sanusauskas, an internationally renowned jazz pianist. Tikimės, kad tai iš tikro yra indėlis į bendrą Lietuvos pirmininkavimą ir į bendrą Lietuvos parodijimą Europai, kaip imlę, naujovėm, kaip turinčią mokslo potencialą, pramonės potencialą. I think that what your country really need is to have a strong determination that can come from politicians, first of all, but also from uh, your identity, because I noticed uh, <laughs> seeing, uh, I just visited the, the downstairs, the, uh, this grand palais of the Duke of uh, Lithuania. It's so beautiful, so long roots, so uh, very interesting uh, jewelries that reflects the importance and the uh, old important tradition that this country has, along with the other uh, uh, Baltic uh, Republic. That is the most important thing and I guess that this uh, conference, many future, the manufacturing of the future of Europe uh, is going to become an extraordinary event that will uh, foster for sure uh, your country and uh, your determination to research to uh, innovate and to develop new worlds in the manufacturing, but also in your industry. During the entire course of the conference at Lit Expo Center, guests were welcome to visit the exhibition zone where EK and IPR had their own stand, as did CEN Senelec, EFRA and LIMPRA. The exhibition zone also featured examples of production such as the design of the first Lithuanian satellite Lituanica Sat-1, 3D scanners, a variety of robots and gliders. Posters of 22 factories of the future-themed project success stories, which were selected from the last four FOF invitations, were also on display.
On the first day of the conference, more than 500 participants from 40 countries were greeted by the Manufuture team at the Litexpo Exhibition Center. Organizing committee chairman Dr. Henrikas Mikolaitis opened the conference, and this was followed by a speech by President of the Republic of Lithuania, Dalia Gribovskaite. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Henrikas Mikolaitis. I am chairman of the organizing committee for the Manufuture 2013 conference. And the moment of opening of the conference has come, and hereby I declare the conference Manufuture 2013 open. <clears throat> it is my great uh, honor and pleasure to welcome you here at the conference, which is the materialization of the ideas and efforts of many of you participating here. More than 500 participants have registered to the conference from 41 countries. We would like to thank all the contributors who have participated in preparation and especially uh, Her Excellency, President of the Republic of Lithuania, Dele Gribovskaite, for her positive attitude and support to the event and its ideas. Your Excellence, the floor is yours. So good morning everybody and welcome to Lithuania, of course, and uh, you realize that our music uh, in the early morning means that we're waking everybody up. Not only you, I guess, but ourselves also. And that's, I mean it, because uh, European future also lies together with the manufacturing and remanufacturing, and this wake up we need for ourselves in future. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have come uh, from already more than 40 countries, both researchers and representatives of businesses, to discuss together the future horizons of manufacturing industry in Europe. And I can start from my small country's examples. Lithuania, though very small, comparatively country, is among few of European member states where manufacturing creates more than 20% of GDP. It's not so often, in Europe at least. Lithuanian certified manufacturers of lasers and laser components have gained up to 10% of the global scientific laser market in the world and even as much as 80% in the very specific global market of optical femtosecond parametrical amplifiers. Sounds very important, and we are very proud that we are able to intervene into innovation markets through all the global world. We also rank still, uh, and we are strong in the uh, other industries. For example, we rank fifth on the list of biggest producers for IKEA. For example, all kitchens in all IKEA uh, shops, Lithuanian production. This proves that the European businesses and countries can succeed in manufacturing if they develop their competitive advantage smartly ensure the cooperation of supportive public sector, manufacturers and research altogether. The European ambition to be the innovation union, it is declared. However, this may not be enough if we want to attract investors and best talents in the future, because we face competitors with a cheaper energy resources and surplus of labor force. The European manufacturing industries can only remain credible for investors and attractive to retailers and customers, of course, if they combine the best practices of what Europe can offer and turn it into competitive designed and made in the European Union products. Our key to the remanufacturing of Europe should be developed by the collaborative efforts of private-public partnerships and based on research in advanced innovative technologies. And I saw already uh, in exposition here in this hall some examples of these perfect innovative technologies. As regards public-private partnerships, the rule of the game, of course, changing every day. In times then businesses can be moved to anywhere in the world, 
Of course, the authorities of European member states should be more proactive in creating favorable conditions for transparent, socially responsible, and environmentally friendly businesses. Modern factories mean jobs, taxes, safe environment, and social cohesion for our people. Public and private institutions should become great partners in the sustainable developments of all our regions in the European Union. On the EU level, we have to invest each euro into every European Union region smartly, strengthening the comparative advantages of the regions themselves. Europe has launched the macro-regional coordinating strategies of the Baltic Sea and Danube rivers, trying to help the region define their biggest potential and stand out economically, socially, and environmentally. The manufacturers should benefit from improved transport corridors also, the application of research and innovation, such as, for example, Innovation Union Flagship Initiative, Horizon 2020, S3, or European Union Common Research Infrastructure Roadmap, and last but not least, more competitive energy prices. The most ambitious European research and development program, Horizon 2020, will offer opportunities to everybody in the new programming period, 2014-2020. As the European Union faces serious competition from the global markets, research should be oriented primarily to the market need. Europe's competitiveness in manufacturing will only come true if businesses and research will work hand in hand, developing advanced technologies and high added value. Why? I would like to wish you and remind that success of manufacturing contributes to the overall success of Europe. And you know it, we know it and rare manufacturing could contribute even more. So I wish you all fruitful discussions and to find the best ways, more efficient ways, how to remanufacture Europe smartly. Thank you. European Commissioner for Research, Innovation and Science, Mary Gogehan Quinn, greeted the participants with a video message. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome you to the Manu Future 2013 conference. I'd like to thank the Lithuanian Presidency for making this event part of their Presidency programme. With just over two months to the launch of Horizon 2020, you have picked an excellent moment to discuss its contribution to the sustainable reindustrialization of Europe. Manufacturing is vital for Europe's economy. The service economy and a strong industrial sector are mutually dependent and mutually supporting. For example, the biggest share of Europe's exports is in manufactured goods and many ICT-based services have been created to support this manufacturing. The manufacturing sector is of course one of the key building blocks of our innovation system. It employs the majority of our scientists and engineers and accounts for two-thirds of business R&D spending. The industrial leadership pillar of Horizon 2020 will help bridge the gap between excellent research and innovation on the market. It aims to speed up the development of the technologies and innovations that will underpin tomorrow's businesses and help innovative European SMEs to grow into world-leading companies. The pillar has three specific objectives. Leadership in enabling and industrial technologies, better access to risk finance and more innovation in SMEs. Horizon 2020 also identifies advanced manufacturing systems as one of the EU's key enabling technologies, or KETs as we call them. We need this emphasis on KETs because they play a crucial role in producing breakthrough innovations in many strategic sectors and in bringing new products and services to the market. Under the seventh framework programme for research, the European Commission worked very closely with industry within the Factories of the Future public-private partnership. Under Horizon 2020, we have introduced a legislative basis for these partnerships in order to further reinforce the cooperation. 
Factories of the Future was launched in 2009 as part of the European Economic Recovery Plan. It received private and public funding of 1.2 billion euro. Many successful industry-led projects were launched, for example, a project on mass customization, which has resulted in 20% energy savings, 15% shorter design times and 20% quicker product delivery. You can see some of the other results in the conference exhibition area. Factories of the Future has helped bring industry back into the framework programme. And I know that 60% of the participation in the projects is from industry, with around 30% from SMEs. I'm very pleased that there has been such a wide participation, including many companies that are not directly involved in the partnership. The Manufuture European Technology Platform is continuing to play a very useful and effective role. Manufacturing has evolved from labour-intensive traditional processes to innovative and sophisticated ICT-enabled advanced manufacturing methods and tools. The Manufuture ETP has been instrumental in this successful evolution and it also has an important role in ensuring that ideas and contributions from a wide variety of stakeholders will be used to help implement Horizon 2020. So it only remains for me to encourage you to keep up the good work and to wish you a very successful conference. Thank you. President, colleagues, uh, participants of the conference. Uh, it's really my pleasure to welcome you to Vilnius, which this year hosts Manufacturer Conference. I would like to thank all conference moderators, speakers, participants who agreed uh, to arrive uh, to Vilnius and to share their experience and the knowledge and uh, insights uh, with us. Let me start by stressing the historical manufacturing technology and technology in general was the basis for the development of civilization. Today, the importance of the manufacturing industry for the sustainable growth of Europe is immense. The scale of this sector, including numerous activities and production techniques at small and medium-sized companies based on traditional production techniques as amateur products, or food technologies to international corporations with complex manufacturing lines and products like advanced robotics, pharmaceuticals or aeronautics. And this creates more than 30 million jobs places and generate billions of euro of added value to European Union economy in general. Therefore, the core of the Europe 2020 strategy is the development of diversified and competitive industrial base. Uh, there is no doubt that 21st century suggests advancing of manufacturing, consequently stimulating innovation performance to address sustainability changes for Europe. Uh, and I truly believe that Europe's intellectual capacity has the potential to suggest most prominent solutions for the vast range of manufacturing sectors. Uh, however, we still have to keep in mind that investment in people, not only in technological advancement of manufacturing process or products, should remain the principal elements of the state's or company philosophy. Therefore, universities and business cooperation for the balanced supply and demand at the labor market should obtain proper attention. Uh, Macro view on either national, regional, or European Union level should offer the possibilities to capture the input and output factors in order to the timely solutions. A result-based policy framework in this case should be dynamic but rational. Only in this way, the complex indicators of either innovation performance or, or output uh, could be the solid background for policy interventions. Standing on the threshold of the Horizon 2020, I dare say that today, Manufuture Conference is an excellent place for the exchange of views and the foundation of the Europe's industry policy, as well as the research and development and innovation policy. Uh, and I think that uh, we should all look for the ways how to 
jump this dead valley in Europe between excellent science, excellent research, but uh, not excellent innovation. So uh, this uh, uh, Horizon 2020 money probably should be, should be used mainly for this part of transferring research and science uh, results into the industry practice. And I believe that uh, uh, we will uh, find the solutions how to do that in the upcoming 2014-2020 period. I would sincerely suggest taking up manufacture flag as a splendid opportunity for sharing the ideas and plans, exchanging best practices, and building partnership up to the most. Be straight, but open. Thank you, and good luck for the conference. After Lithuanian Minister of Education and Science, Danius Pavalkis, delivered his speech, the plenary session was opened. Noriu pasakyt, kad šitas projektą konferencija yra, čia yra gana daug rėmėjų, bet vienas iš pagrindinių konferencijos rėmėjų yra Europos komisijos septinta bendroji programa. Tai yra labai ambicinga programa, kuri remia mokslą ir įvairias su mokslo susijusias iniciatyvas, skirtas pramonėj, verslui, mokslo augdymo ir taip toliau. Taigi šitas projektas buvo paruoštas finansavimui, laimėjo konkursą ir kadangi buvo specialus skvietimas prezidentaujančioms valstybėms, šis projektas ir buvo finansuotas. Manau, tai yra labai didelė sėkmė Lietuvos, taip pat ir galimybė pristatyti tai, ką mes turime ir ką mum Europos Sąjungos parama gali duoti. Iš tikrųjų, konferencija, galbūt turim pasidžiaugti tuo, kad vis dėl to atvyko 41 šalies atstovai, tai kaip su mano future renginiais, tai yra pirmas toks atvejas, kada tiek šalių yra iš tikrųjų atstovavimo. Turbūt jau šiandien kažkas pasakė, ne iš pirma. Tai va, tai rodo vis dėl to tą, ne tik tai, kad pasitikėjimą pačia gamybinė pramonė, nors dabar jau kadangi eina visos mintys yra tai, kad gamybą reikia kelti atgal į Europą, kad stiprinti tą pramonę ne paslaugas pagrindinė dalį, kad paslaugos užimtų bendro vidaus produkto, bet kad pramonė. Ir tai belieka tik tai džiaugtis, kad Lietuva yra taptų valstybių, kuriuose pramonės produkcija sudaro daugiau negu 20 procentų bendro vidaus produkto. Manau, reikia džiaugtis pasimokyti, pasimti, kiek įmanoma kitų šalių patirtis, patirties ir vėlgi skatinti, bendradarbiauti tiek mokslai ir verslai, tiek ir politinės organizacijas, kad būtų palankiai statyminė terpė ir palankio sąlygos tam dalykų įvykti.
Manufacturing is very important simply because it can be a way of creating growth and jobs in Europe, which is something we need uh, very much. Unfortunately, these past years, we lost a lot of manufacturing in developing countries. So now we all have to work in a direction that we re-industrialize uh, Europe. This is the ninth Manufuture conference we have since uh, 2003. In my capacity as the project officer from the European Commission side, it's been already a year I'm working very closely with our Lithuanian colleagues. Most importantly with Hendrikas Mikolaidis, who is the scientific coordinator of this, and uh, Eurobarama uh, Tanguole Trauiene, who is uh, taking care of all the administration and the logistics. We can say that this is a very successful conference. The numbers speak uh, on their own. We have a participation of more than 500 uh, participants all over Europe and beyond from 41 countries. These numbers show how important this Manufuture 2013 in Lithuania is. We had the honor to have the President of Lithuania uh, opening the conference. We have the honor to have the Minister of Education and Research participating at this moment at the uh, conference. This shows also that not only big countries, but small countries with a lot of preparation, a lot of hard work, they can have to know a bit more about our new program, Horizon 2020. And what we would like them is to be more engaged, more eager to participate. And when they start this cooperation and there is more interest from their side, of course, they will have the opportunity to participate in more projects, which will result more funding coming to Lithuania. The first day of the conference concluded with a performance by Juvedra, Klaipeda University's acclaimed dance team that has won World and European Championships in Latin dance sport. Donatas Poujualis, indoor radio-controlled acrobatic aircraft model champion, flew various aircrafts to musical accompaniment. This show was met with ovations and accolades, especially on the part of the foreign guests, the majority of whom were engineering specialists. The second day of the conference was dedicated to industry visits to Lithuanian companies, where company representatives presented their activities to the most influential international business and science representatives, while the conference participants had the chance to learn about manufacturing potential and prospects in Lithuania. Field visits were organized to Laser and Engineering Technologies Cluster, LITEC, GSC EXPLA, GSC OPTIDA, Center of Physical Sciences and Technology, the Precisica Group, the Arginta Group, GSC Brolis Semiconductors, GSC Progressive Business Solutions and GSC Mostalpine by Legeteha.
parallel to the visits, matchmaking events were held at the Expo Center, consisting of B2B and face-to-face -face meetings. During this contact fair, previously announced preliminary topics of the calls for 2014-2015 and ideas were discussed. Face-to-face -face meeting are an effective tool for establishing new partnerships and launching collaborative project proposals. They help strengthen cooperation between European industries and research units and give European organizations a simple, direct and accessible way to find partners throughout Europe. I'm very impressed. I'm surprised that it's so well organized, obviously well supported by the government and uh, you somehow were able to organize everything very, uh, very well. The facilities are great, the f the, even the restaurant is good. Um, you have a lot of uh, workers, uh, probably part-time students from universities who are really uh, very keen to help and they leave a great impression. I think this is a surprisingly well organized conference. I thought in many developed countries, uh, manufacturing has long been considered so something that is uh, old and is uh, sweatshops, it's not worth it. But uh, the messages today are clear that the, the, the administration, the political leadership consider manufacturing important for the future of Europe and are putting in a lot of effort to try to uh, nurture and develop innovation, uh, new ideas to, to bring manufacturing to higher value added. And I think this is a great initiative and uh, I really uh, admire your, your administration for taking this strategy.
10 years ago, uh, my friend uh, Giovanni in Italy took over the initiative and prepared uh, the model for a future orientation of manufacturing in, a academic, uh, in the International uh, Academy of Production Engineering. And resulting from that, we came together and tried to make visions, tried to make roadmaps uh, to establish this community for many future and manufacturing. Oh, this is a beautiful conference and I think uh, uh, each of our conferences set uh, one or two uh, big topics. I remember the conference in, uh, we had in Eindhoven before starting uh, the seventh framework program was very, very important. I remember a conference uh, during the crisis 2008-2009 uh, where we uh, uh, could uh, deliver a package of actions to the Commission for the recovery plan. This was a very remarkable event. This time is a good event because now we start in Europe with the Horizon 2020 program. It's a big uh, research program. And uh, we think that we uh, play with some uh, uh, results from this conference a big role in the political discussion. Uh, I think, first of all, thanks to all of you, because all of you are essential for this event and for the success of this event. More than 500 people from 41 countries, so many of you traveled long distance in order to come here. So I think we are very grateful that you came here to Lithuania, to Vilnius, in order to have this fantastic event. The second, I think, is to the organizers of this event and uh, to the political leaders of this country. I think the fact that we had the President of the Republic, that we had nearly for the entire two days uh, the Minister of, uh, of Research and Innovation in, uh, among us shows how important uh, this subject is for you. And uh, of course uh, uh, to you, uh, Enricas. And I think I would li also like to, uh, to, to mention your team, because uh, we all benefited from the smile of the students which are here. Uh, they were also extremely uh, uh, helpful, nice, friendly, uh, uh, even uh, the impossible was made possible. Uh, no was not an answer, it was always a yes, so thank you very much for all of, all of this. You have a great team here and of course the great team needs a great leader. <laughs> and allow me, uh, last but not least, also to thank my team, of course, the others from my team, uh, all the team of, of, of Lorenzo, uh, uh, Pascal Dupont at our stand, whom many of you know already. It's, it's a well-established team and I'm very proud of them and they, I think, contributed as well. So thank you also, uh, Neo, it was a great job. Thank you. I think it was really a very excellent uh, Manu Future session 2013. And we have written a declaration, Manu Future 2013 Vilnius Declaration. And then I will read it. And even the minister looked very intensively to this declaration and made some comments. You have to write this and this in this way, and this was really interesting. A last few words. Uh, thank you also to you, Henrikas. Thank you very much, and for your team. Uh, the young ladies, girls in the background, in the foreground, also the participants, on the stage, the gentlemen who are working for you. Thank you very much to all of them. It was really a great team. It is a great team, excuse me. And uh, so I said it before to you, this was the best Many Future Conference in 2013. And before, because we are always getting better and better. So. The next computer uh, uh, money future conference think they have a big task to do to make it much better. That's very not so easy. But thank you very much for your activity, Enricas. You are really a good member of our family, 
many future. Thank you very much. The next one will be for the conference in Greece. Please come on stage. <laughs> The Manu Future 2013 conference ended with a symbolic flag passing ceremony during which Dr. Mikolaitis, coordinator of the Lithuanian National Technology Platform, handed over the flag to a representative of the Greek National Technology Platform, since Greece will be organizing the succeeding conference, Industrial Technologies 2014, next year. say thank you for participation, for our ideas, for our efforts. Thank you very much and good luck. Dear colleagues uh, for, of Manu Future and EFRA, dear uh, European Commission officers and representatives, dear organizers, uh, I'm here to get this flag on behalf of Professor George Chrysaluris and uh, uh, we would like to say that we are very honored for that, for this appointment. Uh, we would like to invite all of you in Athens uh, last, next uh, April, uh, April uh, 2014. So, uh, thank you once again and we are expecting all of you in Athens. I think it's a beautiful country and uh, the people I met, I have met so far, everyone's keen to help, very open, very eager to, to meet new, new friends and I'm impressed. This is the first time I'm here in uh, Vilnius and in uh, Lutania and uh, I was impressed about this city and uh, this, this culture and uh, a well-organized conference. It was beautiful and a good, beautiful event uh, we had here in uh, Vilnius. It was very good and I would like to come back at any time. <laughs>